An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strainy, politically incorrect. Your own adult style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. honesty. Which invites you to be to the fullest. Time is speeding up and moving faster. <laughs> and we're moving out of our lives of polarity right. into life of neutrality. That's where we're headed. And we're letting go of a lot of the difficulties and drama mm -hmm. so that we could be a living example of what humanity could be. Right. Yeah. We're learning to see things and ask for them with clarity so that they could manifest in acceleration. And how do we do that? It's less emotional reactiveness mm -hmm. and more just a responding to people rather than the whole, the ah! other thing is, yeah, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I think we're moving out of it. And I think what causes that is judgment, the judgment of ourselves and the judgment of others. Mm -hmm. And what causes that? is good, bad, right, wrong, pretty, ugly, dumb, smart, and, and creating a hierarchy where people are better than the next because we're losing perception that we are all one. Where, when we feel like that, then we feel sometimes, if we could feel so beautiful, then we can also feel so ugly. If we could feel so smart, smarter than others, we could also feel dumber than others. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we're not, it, it, you know, it is creating this, this instability as far as um, how we define our own self-worth when we're comparing ourselves. We're also uh, taught, I think, socially by society um, that we need to depend on something outside of ourselves to define our own self-worth. Like, you don't know enough, you need to go to school to learn it. You can't speak directly to God. You need a priest or a preacher or a rabbi to be in between. Mm -hmm. You don't know about your own body and your own health and how you feel. You need to contact the doctor and do what he says. <laughs> no. You can't govern yourselves. You'd go crazy, little people. You need a, a strong government to take care of you. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, every system, you couldn't be trusted to barter like in the old days. Like, I'll trade you some milk and you'll give me a chicken and, and we'll have a trade, you know. We'll need, a go we'll, need, we'll need a banking system that'll manage and hold on to our money and let us know and take care of us. So... As we don't believe in ourselves, and in the institution of education, I mean, high schools, I mean, actually, K through 12 does a great job of breaking an individual down mm -hmm. and um, letting them know they're not good enough, really. And then they're shot out into the world <laughs> to make their way. Um, this creation of dependency that's intrinsic, um, to our society and actually to the world society, it's everywhere, except for maybe the Aboriginal um, uh, communities and um, some of the more recluse, uh, reclusive um, uh, communities out in the middle of nowhere that haven't mm -hmm. been touched by social norms and values. Um, but we've all been taught that we need a middleman, that we're not good enough as we are. And so we're still looking for something outside of ourselves. 
whether I, I, whether, whether we're looking for the right man to take care of us and take care of things, whether we're looking for more training because we're not good enough as we are to live our purpose and we need to learn more, or whether we say, well, I don't have enough money to do the things I want to. I just can't. I'm, I'm going to wait. When I have enough money, then I'll do this. So everybody is waiting for something and they're not jumping in. And um, this is very hard. So the creation of dependency has been a real, is, is really the name of the game that we have to let go of. And where are we headed toward? Mm -hmm. Neutrality is kind of like, I am what I am. I am that I am, here I am. Right. They can't leave me. Um, am I even- A lot of that uh, though, I mean, all of the things that you just described, I know that I've seen a lot of people who I never expected to have a change in their way of thinking, moving more towards this paradigm of self-worth and, and understanding their own inherent value. And and I've been watching that happen, like people, like popcorn, you know, they're just <laughs> they're starting to understand That's things. Exciting, huh? It's we so exciting to see so that. We're being inundated with light, though. I mean, partly the solar flares, partly like we're a photon belt, and and um, partly uh, the the acceleration uh, in frequency of Gaia herself, and we are rising to this. We are all changing, and um, mm -hmm. we are kind of waking up, and different things are being exposed along the way. I mean, honestly, like what? well, we don't, not that many of us, uh, we're starting to not listen to doctors as much. We're mm -hmm. waking up to the ideas of GMOs. What's going on with this? There have been many, many, many attempts to start World War III and it hasn't really worked. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't gotten rid of war, but um, I expect by 2023, 24, there's gonna be a breakdown in the political system in the banking system. The educational system is really coming down. Mm -hmm. right. Institution of religion is going, is, is really being challenged as well. And we're seeing that not all priests and preachers and everybody has everybody's best interest in mind. And you need to look within and you need to question, is this a good person? Are they leading me in the right direction? This is how people are waking up a little bit. Yeah. That's, as long as people, though, are caught in this gerbil wheel of fear, like, oh my God, I have kids to take care of. I have to have a house to live in. We have to pay for the car. I don't have time to think about who I am, why I came here. I don't have time for <laughs> spirituality. I gotta get to work at 6 a.m. I gotta wake up at four, get the kids' lunches packed. I have to take my, my kids to work or a sitter then me to work, work a nine hour day, pick the children up, do homework with children, make dinner and start again. I have to sit under fluorescent lights working for somebody else to please them for nine hours and then get back to my children. Our children are being raised by other people and we lost our sense of community. This is breaking down. Right. You're not gonna be able to do it if you, and, and, what creates your frequency is the quality of your thoughts. Do you feel like a lot of the personal development stuff that's out there today about, you know, just think positive thoughts or, you know, just, just be happy or whatever. Do you feel like that is the whole story? I, I really don't feel like it's the whole story myself. Not when it's fake. Not when it's fake. Right. Just fake until you make it smile because inside you're not feeling like that as a matter of fact what's happening then is you're completely out of alignment mm -hmm. inside you're worried you're scared you're anxious or mm -hmm. bitter or fearful and then you're smiling joy light love joy light love friends yeah. and you're not a vibrational match you certainly Do you think you could that explain in. that concept of congruence a little bit more for people? Because I feel like that's something that particularly in like the new age community really needs to be explained a little better because 
I see a lot of people, especially people who come and have sessions with me, who they're like, well, why is this not working? Why is my life suck? Like I'm, I'm being happy. I'm thinking positive thoughts. I'm, I'm blah, 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 you know, but they're like you said, not in alignment. Like it's not a well, sometimes experience. Some people it's not on purpose either. Mm -hmm. There are these packets of enslaved energy that are stored inside of themselves that haven't been completely processed mm -hmm. related to abandonment, betrayal, not good enough, not worthy. Oh, shame mm -hmm. is a biggie. Yeah. And um, they haven't been processed and they're under the surface. And um, to some extent, they haven't even come out yet. They haven't even, they haven't even, it's not even the tip of the iceberg because it's just lying inside of people. It's mm -hmm. things that people want to forget. Yeah. And so it's very hard to, you know, until these little pieces of enslaved energy, they're like weights that are weighing somebody down. It's very hard to fly mm -hmm. when they are, Look, think about a hot air balloon. You know how they have those sacks of sand that keep it down. It's not until those sacks of sand are cut that the balloon can fly. Right. Now, a lot of times people don't know, you know, they had some abusive situation. They had some difficulties as a youngster. They don't know where this false belief systems or the programs or the hard edge that they have where it's coming from mm -hmm. but they want it to be done and they just want quickly just like everybody else you said about 2012 in 2012 everybody just wanted to ascend quickly oh i'm ascended that was, oh, easy. Ascend. That was so easy <laughs> wow that was so good now i'm a high level being I'm like wow mm -hmm. there was nothing but basically there are a lot of people when you're talking about alignment that have thoughts and feelings that they're thinking inside mm -hmm. but what comes out of their mouth is not a vibrational match exactly and so that to me is the ultimate of out of alignment and that brings to them a lot of um they're not really manifesting but do i believe that man i think manifestation is sometimes feeling something with all your heart Mm -hmm. You know, just really feeling it. That's the only way to create. It's true. There's no other it's way true. because you'd have to be on that frequency to get more of the same. Mm -hmm. so I said, I'm a big believer in the law of attraction, but the real law of attraction when it's heartfelt, mm -hmm. when you're creating with your heart. Right. Not when you're just saying, I want a million dollars, la, 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 la. Like <laughs> now I have a big red car and I'm driving in it. I think you'd have to think about, because when there's scarcity, when there's a scarcity in love, when there's a scarcity mm -hmm. of money, when there's a scarcity of time, when there's a scarcity of energy, mm -hmm. you know, it's like people are fighting over the same man. And, and undercutting <laughs> each other because he's my man. No, he's my man. This is it's an abundance yeah. of love. That's so interesting. It. And there was and, an abundance of money. Just because this person has money doesn't mean you can't have money. You know, our That's own awesome. disbeliefs internally resist it from coming. What do you see? I mean, this is something I see in a lot of spiritual people is that there's almost like an aversion to money and it actually creates a lot of poverty amongst yeah. people who claim to be spiritual. Can you speak on that a little bit? Well, think about the vows of poverty that people took, you know, mm -hmm. vow of poverty and some people, you know, is it, it's a combination. I mean, the way I see it, I think people lose track of they say, well, I'm in I'm service to man. I'm in, I'm of service. You're not of service to man. You're not mm -hmm. here to just wait on other people. You're of service to the creator. Mm -hmm. You're of service to the creator. And so in being of service to the creator, you're taking care of yourself first. You're filling your own self up, living your own life purpose, 
doing what's best for you, caring for your body, caring for your soul, listening to your heart, bringing yourself and surrounding yourself with the right people that, that you can love and that love you. And not listening to where you need to go and not bringing yourself to situations where you're doing this because it's the right thing to do mm -hmm. because of dogmatic reasons. This is right and this is wrong, you know, and there's going to be a time where, where when more people are doing this and then there's this self care and where people are in service to the creator, mm -hmm. there's not going to be war because people will not be resentful. How could, how could there not be war right now? People hate themselves. They hate their neighbors. They backstab mm -hmm. their friends. Yeah. They're dissatisfied yeah, with the community. There's complete dissatisfaction internally and then it spreads from the micro to the macro. <laughs> We're at war with it ourselves. Does. We're at war with each other. If we were truly of service to the creator, in the sense that we're here to take care of ourselves, to be full mm -hmm. of life, to be a vessel of God. And it spills out. That love, that what? full cup of love spills out. How could there be war? Right. right. Um, it's really just for the higher good and for the joy. How much fun would it be to be hanging out be with all these fun. people that you've talked to for a long time, that have been on your wavelength. I mean, honestly, for some people, and for a long while too, no one in my life understood me. I sounded mm -hmm. like a freak with the things that I was saying. <laughs> first of all, I can her, relate. My family doesn't even really believe that 9-11 is an inside job, still. Mm -hmm. Nobody really believes a lot of the things I think. A lot of people don't know what GMOs are, still. Mm -hmm. You know, I sound like I'm a conspiracy person. I sound like I'm adversarial. I sound what it's like, why can't you just get a real job? You're a teacher. You should be mm -hmm. working as a teacher. You are, you should be grateful that you have a teacher license and a therapist mm -hmm. license. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of interesting. It is really interesting too. I think it's funny too personally myself that people they they ask me well why don't you go get a therapy license or why don't you go like become a licensed counselor or something well, you like, don't need it this is the thing you don't need it to do what you're gonna do you don't no. need it you don't and that's so it. outside of other paradigms you know and this is like yeah my family kind of is annoyed at me because I'm making it work doing what I do and they're like I, I can't relate to you anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. So that's like I said. Awesome. So Facebook friends sort of turned into like who we, you know, really who understand us even more than exactly. some of the people that are around us in our own lives. A lot of the people that are in my neighborhood or other folks, I wouldn't even share the stuff that I, I do and what I, what I think. <laughs> with them. It just doesn't come up. No. It's like, how's the weather? Oh, aloha. Okay. <laughs> and they're actually more, here people are more open than anywhere. Yeah. I mean, they're very aware. Here, there's an awareness of the elders and the ancestors and yes. the Amakua and the spirits of the island and the Menahuni. And, you know, which were, um, Menahuni were, who was here before the Polynesians came to the island. And, um, they have, um, they have a belief in tradition and even a little superstition, mm -hmm. but they do have beliefs that something exists outside of them in the spiritual realm, which is more than a lot of people on the mainland. It's true. They're, they're very, very connected to that. Yeah. It was one of the most inspiring things for me because I lived on the big island for four months in 2012. and Really? It's like really, really cool to me just to see all of that and to feel that presence. Gosh. Well, come and visit again. It's nice. I would love here. to. I love Hawaii so much. Yeah, yeah.